Hello and welcome to Computer Tech and More. Today we're going to be comparing the Scythe Case Flex 2 versus the Case Flex Original. And let's get right into those graphs. Before we get into the main graphs, here is the uh, product information for the Case Flex 120 and the Case Flex 120 version 2. Um, they are both a little bit different than a standard 120 millimeter fan in terms of their depth. Uh, the Flex 2 is one or 26 millimeters thick while the flex original is 27 they both use fluid dynamic bearings 12 volts the flex 2 uh was rated at 0.35 amps which is really high i'm not sure about that while the original is rated at 1.3 amps the rpm range is 300 to 2000 for the flex 2 and 300 to 1200s. So you're going to have to pay special attention to the original flex is peak RPM and we're going to try to compare the peak RPM versus an equivalent RPM on the flex 2 so that the we're comparing apples to apples as closely as possible. So the air flow amazingly is very similar between these two fans. I'm not sure why I went black there for a second but 90 CFM versus 86.9. So that's very impressive and it's kind of remarkable considering the RPM difference between these two fans. Static pressure is vastly different between them. So 2.67 versus 1.02. Uh, and noise value is very different while they both have the same mean time between failure. Okay, first up in the testing is my case simulation test. It is a case a simulated box to, that represents a pretty normal size case. It can hold up to 180 millimeter size fan and larger diameter fans tend to do better in well case airflow testing. So how would we use this case airflow fan or test to determine whether a fan is any good? Well, in my opinion, the best fan in the world for case airflow is going to create a nice uh, cylinder of air behind the fan. So in an ideal world, the fan would be creating a perfectly straight line out its back. So there would be no losses, the air wouldn't spread out at all, anything like that. But we don't live in that ideal world, we live in the real world, where there is of course air in the way for the fan that has to push it. So what does that mean? It means we're going to incur losses. So a fan that still creates a good cylinder of air out behind it, it's going to create as flat a line as possible, and it's going to be as linear as possible as the airspeed drops. Well, one that tends to shoot air off to the sides in every direction without as much forward thrust, basically, is going to have a very steep drop off and then very little air velocity here at the end. Actually, kind of like the Kaze Flex 2 in this graph. It's the graph is indicating that it shoots air off to the sides pretty predominantly, actually. Um, and I took the data points at four spots that are representative of different case sizes. So six inches, nine inches, 11 inches, and 14.5 inches. Six inches is representative of a small form factor case that is still more or less airflow type optimized. Nine inches is representative of a small case that still is more or less a standard case format. So that's front to back airflow. 11 inches is representative of a mid tower, something a lot like the Fractal Meshify 2C and the Corsair 550D would be very representative of that category. While something like uh, the Fractal Design Torrent would be representative of that 14.5 inch mark. And for air coolers, you want the airspeed to be as high as possible for when the air gets inhaled basically by your cooler. That greatly improves thermal performance of, well, air coolers in particular, but pretty much any type of cooling apparatus. So having fans that don't perform well, that don't perform that well and have huge losses in performance at the end, are really not that great because there's not going to be much airflow by the time it gets to your radiator, your heatsink, or the end of the case to get the air out of it again. As for the Kaze Flex original, it had some very interesting data and I tested it a whole bunch where uh, somehow at 40% uh, 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 PWM fan signaling, so that's 560 RPM, 
it was outperforming itself at higher RPMs. So I think just somehow it transitions itself from um, being able to shoot it, the air in more like a cylinder shape to then spewing it out to the sides at other RPMs. That's my my only explanation for this. It was very odd behavior and it was uh, repeat testable for me. More directly comparing these fans against one another in noise normalized testing. So noise normalized testing is based off of a 40 decibel mark on the A12X25. That value was determined uh, based off of the A12X25 running at around 1200 RPM when it was blowing air through my old CPU uh, AIO in my old Corsair 550D case. I just found it to be particularly silent. So I placed my microphone right, placed the microphone near the fan and let it do its thing. So on this graph, I have a control fan marked in this blue line. The control fan is based off of uh, three parts, the A12X25 to one part A14, both noctual fans. So 100 larger diameter fans, like I mentioned before, tend to do better in this case airflow test than 120 and smaller size fans. So adding that 140 mix into it, I felt help um, make it more representative of what I want a good fan to be. Well, how do these fans compare? Very badly. Uh, the Kaze Flex 120 actually starts off kind of better at that six inch mark, and then it steeply drops away. The Kaze Flex 2 starts off about the same and then quickly drops away. So neither of these two fans is particularly desirable for case airflow based on my testing. And again, this is noise normalized. How do they do at 100% PWM fan signaling? Not much better. Um, the, the graph over here indicates the RPM the fan was running at and the noise level that I saw. And it's pretty clear that even though the Kaze Flex 2 is spinning much faster and it's honestly 10 decibels noisier. It is not moving much more air. And I want to bring up, I originally, my I'm revamping my whole testing methodology on noise testing. Uh, while I was doing this video, I was also essentially retesting fans for noise values all at the same time. Unfortunately, all that testing wasn't in done, done in time for the production of this video. So I'm going to be republishing this video and a whole bunch of my earlier videos uh, with the new testing methodology. Currently, my error in noise values is plus or minus four decibels. Every 10 decibels is a doubling in noise value. Uh, while testing, I also had the fan microphone placed rather close to the fans and I felt that I was creating extra rever reverberations through the blades that would cause some interference. So I've gone and revamped the testing, moved the microphone further away. I feel like I've gone it to within two decibel range. Um, it means I have to be very careful when I'm testing, meaning what's going on around me. Uh, in the summer, it's going to be particularly hard because of AC units. Uh, so I'm luckily I've done enough fans that I have some backlog. But um, yeah. I've got a whole bunch of new content coming with new sound testing for all the fans and we're going to be moving forward using the new testing methodology. As for error in airspeed, it's plus or minus 0.1 meter per second and that is just the error within the anemometer itself. Let's move on. Next up, we're taking a look at noise normalized uh, distance from the fan versus airspeed with all the other fans that I've tested rather than taking that very tight specific look. You can see that at the six inch mark, the Kaze Flexes tend to do pr pretty well compared to other fans. However, they have a very steep drop off when compared to other ones. That actually by the 11 inch mark, they're performing worse than the P12 and performing really rather closely to the NFS12B, which I found to be a particularly poor performer. If we jump things up to 100% PWM fan signaling, things don't improve for these fans. They're, they're terrible. Don't buy them as case fans. Um, beating the dead horse. Well, nine inch mark case airflow test, uh, airspeed versus decibels. Nine inch mark is kind of this middle ground where the fans that shoot air off to the side tend to start dropping off while fans that tend to shoot air straight tend to still be doing rather well. And we can see that 
that statement basically holds true where they kind of are matching performance pretty well at lower RPMs and then they just kind of straight line. They don't gain much performance for a lot more noise. They're not worth considering. Let's just move on. Kaizen Flex version 2, 120 millimeter. Kazi Flex 120. Kaz Flex 2. Cool config. Now, taking a look at these fans going through my CPU air cooler, which is the Noctua U12A dual uh, or single tower cooler. The cooler itself has fairly tight uh, fin spacing, making it kind of this middle ground between a lot of older style CPU coolers, which had more loosely spaced fins and radiators, which are known for having very tight fin spacing. So the graph on the left side is RPM versus airspeed through the cooler, and that is a pure efficiency of the blade design. So how good are the blades at pushing air through the, cool, through the cooler? The right graph, on the other hand, is a noise efficiency. It is how quiet is that fan at pushing air. In both graphs, the vertical axis is airspeed. In the left one, the horizontal is RPM. In the right one, it's decibels. So now let's take a look at it. Here is my control fan, and wow, I mean, like, seriously, considering what we just saw from the case testing, it is wow. Their blade design is very efficient. They perform remarkably well. They're beating out my, my control fan pretty hands down substantially, um, because better, better fans of both these graphs are going to be top left. If we take a look at how they're doing in uh, noise testing, they are still doing very good. So the blue line, the blue dots are my control. The Kaze Flex Original is doing very well, and the Kaze Flex 2 is doing even better. It's very remarkable considering how poorly they do in KS Airflow. So leading into this, they're looking very good for heatsink and radiator fans. But how do these fans compare against other fans? Well, I've already talked about the error in my measurements and uh, error in my noise values. We can jump specifically to talking about what's on this graph. Right here in this data, this is the wattage with the W atom equals air speed. In another video, I did extensive testing for what air speed through the cooler using just one fan, what air speed through the cooler equates to a CPU wattage. This is my CPU wattage. I have an 11700K. If you have an 11700K and the U12A cooler, you should see similar results. Not the exact same, but similar results. If you have a different CPU than me, but have the same cooler, these wattages will not line up perfectly. And if you have a completely different cooler uh, than me, then these wattages won't be the same at all. But what will be the same is a jump in performance. The jump in performance won't be the same as mine because every cooler is different. The fin spacing and um, heat pipes or radiators, everything is different and responds differently. And of course, at some point, you're going to be blowing so much air through a cooler, whether it's radiator or heatsink style, that you're going to see very little performance gain for how much air you're blowing through it. And this is both due to uh, limitations in the CPU, meaning more wattage does not increase, does not mean you get a linear improvement in clock speed, as the same way as just because you're blowing twice as much air through it 
doesn't mean you're going to get twice as much heat dissipation. So you're going to see uh, more things compounded, basically. But what you will see is, let's say you have the Arctic P12. At my noise normal value, it's moving 1.7 meters per second of air. If you move up to the Kaze Flex 2, you're now moving 1.8 meters per second of air. That is a substantial improvement. So now, instead of having a CPU running at 145 watts, you're now letting it draw maybe 100 and 215. So that is a huge improvement in wattage. But let's say you don't like the noise value I chose that I find quiet. You, you find that noisy. Well, you could pull back on the fan's uh, PWM signal to the noise level you like, and you'd get equivalent or better performance for less noise. So basically, what I, everything about this is if you're a fan here and you go there, you're going to get better performance. If you're already up there, well, then there's no point in switching. Sort of thing, but now we're taking a look at them at 100% PWM, PWM fan signaling. And the Kaze Flex Original, well, it was already pretty much running at its maximum RPM, 1,170. If we take a look at the next graph, it's now running at 1,000. 1170 right here at the bottom so there it's it's already maxed out uh you're getting no more performance out of that fan and that would be a reason why you may want to avoid it unless you have a particular application the Kaze flex 2 on the other hand still has some extra legs and jumps way up there it is outperforming the general typhoon at its 100 percent mark for a little bit lower rpm although it is noisier so it is doing really quite well. So the Scythe Kaze Flex, I think is looking really good as a case fan. Taking a look at the data from a slightly different perspective, and this is uh, airspeed through the cooler versus decibels. Better fans are once again in the top left, worse fans are in the bottom right, and taking a look at the data more closely. This green line right here is representative of the Kaze Flex. The more pinkish line is representative of the Kaze Flex 2. Both of them are upper middle, I'm going to call it, where the A12X25 is right here with the Silence 4 Pro, which I'm kind of considering uh, middle of the pack these days or where a fan wants to be, and anything over it is considered good to very, very, very good. So like the Ventro Pro and the Mobius are ranked at that very good category currently. Uh, we'll see where things shake up when I... Uh, finally finished testing all the fans for my updated noise testing. I'll be really curious to see how things shake up and rank. But it's clear that Scythe has great performance out of these fans. They're, they're doing remarkably well. But one thing they are terrible at is CFM. So CFM is a very scientific type test. In CFM testing, you basically hook the fan up to a tube and you blow air down the tube at an anemometer, a measure reading the, a, a device to measure the airspeed. So you know the airspeed and you know the area, the surface area of whatever you're blowing the air through, and you're able to calculate CFM. CFM is very similar to heatsink testing, but not the same, because um, when you're blowing air down the tube, you're basically negating a lot of the effects of the fan blowing air off to the sides and in every direction because the air wants to travel down the path of the tube anyways. So I don't particularly like CFM testing and I think channels that only do CFM testing are basically fools who know nothing about, well, aerodynamic science. As an, aer as an aerospace engineer, this is one thing that I know about. But what's really interesting and kind of funny is that the Kaze Flexes do really bad in this category, considering they did so well in the previous one. And I had the same problem with the Wonder Snail, which is also a Scythe fan, where I think if something is up with the motor uh, and it's just not able to handle the impedance of having basically the, the anemometer's blades in the way. That's, that's the only other thing it can't basically pick up its RPM to push through it like a lot of other fans can, but I can't really explain the data. And so as a result, the fans also form 
really, 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 really badly in noise normalized CF CFM testing. And even at 100% PWM fan signals, they didn't gain that much performance. They make a lot of noise. I don't know specifically why. Like, it's really funny that the slim version outperforms the full fat 100 standard 120 millimeter ones. Uh, so we're going to quickly move past this and go to the open box experience. Right after we take a look at CFM versus decibels, and again, very bad. Now let's do the open box experience because there's not much to talk about. Now that we've finished taking a look at all the data, let's do our open box experience. So these are the two boxes that the fans come in. So the K-Flex, it tops out at 120 RPM, while the Flex 2 tops out at 2000 RPM, and there are a couple different versions of it. I don't think this one had a higher performance version, but this had a lower performance version. Um, then we got the backs. It's got some spec information, some sizing information, a little diagram of airflow going through it. Uh, overall, pretty standard stuff. The Case Flex Original comes with standard uh, mounting screws, as well as a... Uh, and it also features a Molex to two pin. So this would just lock the fan at uh, probably its maximum RPM if you uh, needed to use it in this circumstance. The Flex 2, on the other hand, comes with a cable extension, uh, rubber mounts, and standard uh, screw mounts for it. So overall, pretty basic package. So now let's zoom in and focus in on these two uh, fans as well as their frame design and take a look at some of the differences. So first and one of the main differences that I'm seeing is on this frame. So we got one angle, two angles, stepped inlet, while this is more of a smoother sweep into the blades. But that also means that there's a bit more gap at the tip of the blade than what you see in the uh, Case 2 version, where this fits much tighter to the edge of the frame than what you saw in the original. However, the gap at the back part appears to be fundamentally the same. So I'm talking about at the back of the frame versus the back of the frame on this side. And I would say that's actually below average blade distance, which could either indicate um, poor quality control or poor quality in the blades where they're expecting them to stretch over time. So it just extends the lifespan before the blades start hitting the frame and making this horrible scratching, screeching sound or grinding them to a halt. I don't know that for certain. Uh, Long-term testing of fans is currently outside my um, testing scope, but that is just a prediction based on what I can see on these fans themselves. The blade design appears to be fundamentally the same between these two fans. I see very little difference in terms of the blade angle and even blade shape going on here. I just see some minor tweaks and changes to the frame. They both have the same sort of removable um, rubber vibration absorbing, so you could actually switch and swap them between each other. On the back, they are similar but different. So this, that's interesting. So it's sort of a, um, let's change the focus, like a uh, semicircle going on here. So it sweeps in, hits a narrow point, and then sweeps to the bottom. So it's, you know, sweep, sweep. So it um, compresses and then diffuses the air at the, at the end. While uh, this one has just that little bit of an inlet going on in this little bit of an outlet with a much larger flat area. So that could be one of the reasons why this one's a little bit more efficient, is it has a more area where uh, it's got no gap between the blade and the frame. As we saw in testing, neither of these two fans did particularly well in case airflow. However, both did well in CP, my CPU cooling test. Mind the original case uh, just lacks the high RPM, so it's it's really not the best choice for CPU cooling because you're gonna to miss top end performance to uh, really cool down the CPU. It would be just fine and dandy if you got a fairly low powered CPU. Uh, but if you're looking at anything X or K series, you're gonna want, if you're gonna look at this fan, you're gonna want the higher performance one. 
and specifically looking at that heatsink, uh, again, this is the higher choice, better choice because of the lack of RPM. Um, then the frame design in terms of the struts are near on identical. I can, matter of fact, rotate it so that they, they both have a little guide for the uh, cables, which is good. It keeps them nice and protected. The struts are nice and thin to reduce how much air they're blocking. Um, the front, same sort of thing. I will say in this frame, the original is a little bit more attractive looking, but realistically in your case, they're just basic fans. You're not going to be uh, actively taking that much of a look at them. Uh, specifically taking a look at the blade design, these are more of an airflow style fan than a pressure fan, which actually leads to the result of how well they did in uh, the CPU cooler test uh, as a surprising result because, again, these are more like airflow uh, blades. So high pressure fans tend to be flat. So if, you know, fan angle, they tend to be fairly flat or flat and then curve steeply downward, while airflow blades are more like uh, like that. They face straight up and down. And these stick more straight up and down with very little flat area at the tip of the blades. So it's just a pretty amazing result uh, going on there. Um, so I think it just has to do with the number of blades and it's just shoving air <laughs> down the heat sink. Um, but it leads me to believe that they won't do as well at higher pressure applications that you'd see in a radiator but they do okay on a heat sink like I have. In terms of the rest of the housing design, because it's nice and square, they're gonna seal up nicely next to one another. So you can see that the outside of the frame is actually near and identical to each other, but they'll seal up nicely so to create a nice pressure uh, volume here. So if the radiator was uh, down underneath, it would just seal up around it so all the air would be shoved through the radiator rather than having gaps shooting out around the edges. So that's overall a good design choice uh, from Scythe for these fans. Well, let's move on to the value proposition for them. Okay, now we're into the value proposition. The Kaze Flex Original is a $14 fan. The Kaze Flex 2 is a $16 fan. So they're both in what is now considered a value category, where kind of north of $25 is leading into premium uh, fans, while less than like that $14, $15 mark is where you're into like extreme value fans. So they're in what I would call a value category. So here we're taking a look at performance per dollar. So it's how much air does it push, meters per second, or CFM, whatever is applicable, to how much money does the fan cost. If you're on an ultra tight budget, these are the graphs you wanna pay special attention to because you're looking for the best bang for your buck. What is gonna get you the best amount of air movement for the least amount of your money? If you've got a little bit higher budget and you want to get better noise performance, better top end performance, kind of whatever performance category, or you really like RGB, you've got you would use this with the other data to then pick out what fan gives you the best ratio of performance, lighting, whatever, to its dollar value that, that you like. And if you've got unlimited budget, I'm not sure why you're checking this out, because this is value. And if you've got all the money in the world, you're just going to get whatever fans you want. But, <laughs> all jokes aside, how do these fans actually rank compared to other ones? Well, particularly in noise normalized values, which is what you would look at in case airflow test or as a case fan, they actually do kind of okay. They are ranked towards the top at the six inch mark. Oh, I want to make that special to special that is the six inch mark, uh, where the air hasn't had too much of an opportunity to just spread out and everywhere and slow down too much. At 100%, they don't rank quite as well. The Kaze Flex Original actually is the better of the two, but nothing beats out the TLG-12. At the 100% mark, the TLG-12 is still just king of the road. Moving up to the 11-inch mark. Don't get them. If you have a big case, just just don't. They, they kind of rank okay, 
the Flex 2 is bad though. The original is kind of okay. Like, I mean, you, you can track it, but it's nowhere near the better ones. But if you're taking a look at 100% PWM, they are bad. Just save your money and get something better. And, but if you're looking at them going a CPU air cooler, well, they are flipping awesome. Like, holy crap. I mean, the Antec Storms came in a triple pack, which is known a known way to save money on fans. These fans came as individuals. So completely amazing. I would say that I would recommend them as as CPU cooler fans if you're on a budget. Uh, at 100% PWM thin singling, there are better choices, but they're still not bad at that, particularly the Flex 2. The Flex original I'd probably avoid unless you've got a very low wattage CPU. But the Flex 2 is looking pretty, pretty good. Not the best, but pretty good. And last but not least, CFM. <coughs> yeah, just... <coughs> so, conclusion time. Where would I say these fans are? Well, if you haven't noticed, as I've been talking... Only consider these fans if you're going to be putting them through a CPU cooler or a radiator. Otherwise, they're not worth your time or your money. That is the end of the story uh, for these fans. Um, thank you for watching my video. If you have constructive criticism, uh, please leave in the comment section down below. I always read it and I appreciate constructive feedback. If you're just going to rant at me, I don't need that in my life. Um, please subscribe for more content. I've got lots of fan videos, both on my channel already and coming out soon. Uh, questions, comments about fans, leave it down below. If you want to see me review a particular fan, please leave it in the comment section. I'm always looking for new fans to try to review. And uh, I've got a Patreon page. I want to upgrade some of my testing equipment, but I can't do without viewer support. Uh, otherwise, I'll just keep doing the things the way I'm currently doing at my uh, low budget. Other than that, have a great day. Let's check out the raw data and uh, we'll conclude this. Well, that's my video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please subscribe for more content. Check out my Patreon page. I greatly uh, appreciate you considering um, supporting this channel. Uh, for more fan videos, please uh, take a look at my uh, channel. And if you have any ideas as to other fans who'd like me to test, please leave it in the uh, comments down below. Thank you and have a great day. And here is the raw data for the Scythe Kaze Flex and Kaze Flex 2, top and bottom, marked in green. Uh, you are welcome to use this data for your own purposes. So if you want to record it, put it into Excel, you are more than welcome to do so. However, if you are going to put it in a publication, or you're going to publish it in a video. I do ask that you reference me as the original creator of the data because it's more than an hour and a half just to do testing on each fan individually. So for this video, that is three hours of fan testing. And then I have to make graphs, that's, or update graphs, I should say. That is a solid 30, 40, up to an hour. And then I need to make the presentation and film it. All in all, not counting the fan testing, we're looking at north of three hours of just updating that kind of stuff. So it's a lot of work to produce this type of video, but it's a labor of love because I'm interested in fans. And that brings us to the end. Again, thank you for watching my video. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time here on Computer Tech and More.